Assalamu alaikum dear students, again Mr. Abro, if you continue working with quantum mechanics, but th it is part here, this we start with a new lesson, lesson 3.2, photoelectric emission. It is part one, concentrate in this, part one of lesson 3.2, okay? Because we will see uh, another part in the same lesson. So uh, let me start reading the objectives that we will cover uh, during this lesson. To define the photoelectric effects or photoelectric emission, threshold frequency and work function, understand the photoelectric effect provides evidence for a particular nature of electromagnetic radiation Why phenomena such as interference and diffraction provide evidence for a wave nature. Because the significance of threshold frequency and use the equation of work function, explain photoelectric phenomena in terms of photons, energy and work function, uh, recall and use, uh, uh, sorry, recall, use and explain the significance of Einstein's equation. Describe an experiment to measure maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons. As you see, uh, this lesson does uh, concentrate on, and the, even the title was on photoelectric emission. What's photoelectric emission? Uh, we need to remove electrons from the surface of matter. And in physics, as we see, as we studied before, there are two ways to remove electrons from the matter. First way, we, we took it before in semester one. Uh, we, what we were doing in cathode ray tube, we were heating the filament. So when we heat the filament, the electrons are emitted. So the first way to remove electron from the surface of metal is by heating the metal. How? By connecting a low voltage to the filament so the filament will heat, so electrons will be ejected. This we called before thermionic emission. Yeah, I'm using thermal energy, I'm using thermal energy heating to let the electrons emit. Now in this, in our lesson today, which is photoelectric emission, we will use the light energy to remove electrons. So what we have here, Here I have photons, right? The photons are coming toward of ultraviolet or high energy photons, like uh, for blue light. They coming toward to, uh, is directed to the surface of the matter. When these photons hits the surface, electrons they are emitted from the surface. So this process, what we call it, photoelectric emission. Of course, not any light can remove electron. Is it clear? It depends on the metal. Okay, later we will study a thing called work function, and it depends on the energy of the photon. These electrons, when they absorb this photon, when they take the energy of this photon and leave the metal, and they are emitted from the metal, we call them photoelectrons. So after uh, absorbing, the, absorbing this photon or taking the energy of this photon, what we call these uh, these electrons, we call them photoelectrons. We call them photoelectrons. Okay. So again, we call them photoelectrons. Okay. So we have emission because we need to understand the title. Okay, the, if we don't understand the title, that means we have problem. Emission of photoelectrons. So because that we say, what we say, so we have emission of photoelectric emission means we have emission of photoelectrons. Because these electrons, after they absorbing the energy that comes from the, uh, from these photons, they, we call them photoelectrons. So let now let we define now the photoelectric emission after having this idea, then we can see simulation in that. Photoelectric emission, it is the release of electrons, or it is the emission of electrons, okay, from the surface of a metal when electromagnetic radiation or light is incident on its surface. As we see here, the light is coming from a source here hits the surface of sodium metal, then electrons are emitted, you see? Of course, we call these electrons photoelectrons again. 
you understand? So uh, uh, you see the photons, not any photons, specific photons are used here, suitable photons are used, so electrons will be emitted. Not any light can remove electron. We will see this now in the uh, in this simulation. I will activate now, I operate now. Just a few minutes, few seconds. So let me see together. This simulation make us understand more um, uh, photoelectric emission. Okay. Okay. Just a few seconds. Okay. Um, as we see above here, we have a source of light. This is the source of light. And we can adjust the intensity of light. The intensity now is zero. Okay, and we can adjust, we can change the color of the uh, used and the phenomena. On this side, the, uh, uh, the left side, I have uh, uh, the cathode or the metal where I will light, I will show you. Mm, I will give intensity, increase the intensity. So I'm lighting on the metal. On the other side, this side is connected to the negative side of the battery or the voltage source, I put here like three, four voltage. Okay, three, volts. three or four volts, I mean. So this side is called cathode because it's connected to the negative pole of the battery and this side is the, you see here, I don't know if it's clear for you, you see the red uh, positives and the uh, uh, blue negative. So uh, I'm lighting on cathode and the other side we have the anode and we have here down a meter reads the current. Okay. If we see here, we are using sodium metal. So the metal, the, the surface here is a sodium, is what is, is, is plated. This metal is plated with sodium. Okay. So we see when we lighten the metal, the electrons they are they are emitted from, from the metal. Now um, if I try to increase the intensity, see, see what happens. So uh, uh, let we read initially the current. What's the current down? It's 0 0.018. If I increase the intensity, you see what happens to the current? It's 0 0.13. So increasing the in intensity of light means more photons are used so more electrons are emitted because each photon comes to the surface remove one electron you see so if i use 100 photons 100 photo electrons will be emitted so more current will be uh, read by the emitter you get the idea this we will uh, study it in details later the question is which is different which show the difference between classical physics and uh, and modern physics. In classical physics, they were considering that uh, when we uh, uh, increase the intensity, whatever was the color, the photoelectric emission will exist. Um, now, what we will see that now I'm using keep the intensity at the middle, like forty percent. Um, so we have photoelectric emission, I'm using violet of purple or purple color. Now, if I use blue, you see, same intensity, you see still we have photoelectric emission. So if I use a green, uh -huh, no photoelectric emission. That means not any light that can remove electron from this metal. If I use uh, yellow or orange, no photoelectric emission. Um, uh, if I use red, no photoelectric emission. Okay. In classical physics, they were considering that even if I use red, if but I, I increase the intensity, I have photoelectric emission. See, the intensity doesn't affect the photoelectric emission when I use red. Okay. Do you know why? Because this photon is weak. This photon doesn't remove electron. It, it's energy. So the intensity doesn't affect photoelectric emission. The thing which affect the photoelectric emission is the color. Is what? Is the color. Is the energy of the photon. Because when we change the color, we are changing the wavelengths. So we are changing the energy of the photon. 
but we keep it on blue light. So um, on a blue light, if I increase the intensity, yes, I have uh, more electrons, as we see, will be emitted, so they cannot be increased. Okay, so this is general idea, general stimulation. Show me um, uh, the photoelectric emission and how the electrons are leaving the surface of metal when uh, specific light is used. Here, even we can use different method. See, blue light is removing electron from sodium. If I use platinum, you see, it doesn't remove. This, to understand this, we need to study a thing called work function, okay? After understanding that, we can come back to the stimulation. Okay, let me continue our work after getting an idea now. It's an introduction. Just introduction later, we will come back to the simulation and we can activate it again and uh, uh, we understand more. Okay. So the next step is to do this experiment. We have, as you see, this diagram show me uh, sorry, just I need to. Okay. So, this experiment, uh, 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 there is condition to do this experiment. Okay. We need to have energy of the photon greater than or equal to the work function. We will discuss this next step in details. Now you can't understand it. Um, uh, the metal used should be clean and shiny. So, the cathode, I'm lighting on cathode. This metal should be clean, should be shiny, rich with electron. And the metal uh, should be kept in vacuum. So we put the cathode, even the anode, in vacuum in a glass, evacuated, uh, evacuated tube, glass tube, and inside there is a vacuum. Now one student will ask me why we need to evacuate this glass. Because these electrons, when they leave the cathode surface, they may collide with these particles or with these gas particles. To avoid that, we remove the particles from the glass. You get the idea? Okay. Now we need to concentrate on the idea of the work function because if I don't understand work function, it's very hard to understand photoelectric emission. Okay, let me start together. Here in the figure below, as you see, we have sodium metal. We have sodium metal, okay, and it has work function to electron volt. I need to understand what's the meaning of work function. Let me read together, then we analyze together. Work function is the minimum amount of energy. When we say minimum amount of energy, we mean by this energy, photon's energy photons energy photons what energy okay so the minimum amount of photon energy needed or necessary to for an electron to escape or to be removed from the surface of matter let me understand more i need my aim is to remove this electron. You see this electron, I need to remove it. To remove anybody, you need force, you need energy, you need to do work, right? So the minimum energy that can remove this electron or require, needed by this electron to leave, what we call it, we call it work function. And it's represented by letter phi. Is it clear? So letter phi here in our example, it is two electron volt. Means if I give this electron, if I direct toward it a photon with energy one electron volt, this energy is not enough to remove this electron because at least it needs what two electron volt. So if I give it 1.5 electron volt, it will not leave. Still, this photon is what? Still, this photon is weak. Because what I need, or sorry, what the electron needs at least how much? Two electron volt. You see? So, if I give it another photon with 
energy exactly to electron volt, it will leave, but without uh, a kinetic energy, without speed. You understand? To understand uh, these details, we will go to the next slide. And uh, we understand more, but I uh, I hope you get the meaning of the work function. So it's the minimum photons energy work function. Again, it's the minimum energy. Okay, it's the minimum energy photon because the energy is taken from whom? From the photon. Okay, needed to remove this electron. So if we continue here, means equal to H F minimum, you see? Because if the energy of the photon is minimum, the frequency is minimum. Equal H C over lambda maximum. We will discuss this later, okay? Maximum because inversely proportional. Anyway, now uh, let me understand more the cases and relating the energy of the photon with uh, with the cases of photoelectric emission. This figure show me three different cases of photoelectric emission. If I look at the first case, so let, let me now understand or apply what we uh, have covered before. If I see here, if I see here three different light colors is directed toward this metal, uh, and its work function is how much? Three electron volt. We have three cases. You see, before I start, when I change the color, I'm changing the wavelength, so the energy of the photon changes. This is very important idea. Is it clear? So again, E photon, E photon is equal to HC over lambda. Every time we change the color, we are changing the wavelength. So when the wavelength increases, we have less energy photon. Okay? So changing the color is, uh, leads to change the wavelength of, uh, of light, so that affects the energy of the photon. So here in the figure, I see three different types of photons are directed to the same method. In the first case, in the first case, the energy of the photon is 1.8 and the work function is 2, which means this photon is weak photon. The energy is not enough because at least how much we need? We need 2 electron volt. So the electron which is here does not leave the surface. No electrons will be emitted. So here we have no photoelectric emission. No photoelectric emission. Even if we increase the intensity, no electrons will be emitted because this photon is useless. Uh, I mean, yani, it doesn't lead to photoelectric emission. Now, the second case, if I use green light and imagine approximately the E photon is 2 electron volt. So exactly it's equal to whom? To the work function. So here in the second case, the energy of the photon equals to whom? To the work function. If two electron volts equal to the work function, the electron will leave, as you see. It leaves the surface, but without kinetic energy. We say kinetic energy equal to zero, or with zero speed, because uh, uh, the method or the electron needs to, so I give it exactly two. Is it clear? No more extra energy to move these electrons or let this electron leave the surface with, 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 with kinetic energy. Now let we see uh, the last case. But here we have photoelectric emission because the electron is leaving. The photoelectron is emitted. So we have. Now the third case, if I use energy 3.2 by changing the color, this is like blue color. Okay, 3.2, it's more than what? So here the energy of the photon is greater than the work function. In this case, of course, the electron will leave the surface even with extra energy, which will be used as kinetic energy. Is it clear? 
So uh, uh, as we see, if we need to draw a conclusion for this uh, uh, explanation, uh, we uh, conclude that to remove electron from the surface of, uh, of metal or to have photoelectric emission, uh, uh, we need to uh, write a conclusion for that. Okay, before this, uh, we need to know So the conclusion here is uh, um, I prefer to, to make the conclusion at the end. Now, uh, let me go again to the work function to understand more work function. Then we draw the conclusion. So the work function, the work function, it is uh, equal to energy minimum because it's the minimum energy needed from this photon to remove the electron. You see, so uh, it is the minimum energy. This is very important idea. So, uh, so the minimum energy has minimum frequency. Why? Because frequency and energy they are directly proportional. This minimum frequency needed to remove the electron, we call it threshold frequency. What we call it, threshold frequency. You understand? Or we can call it cut off frequency. Cut off frequency. Okay. So when we say threshold frequency or cut off frequency, uh, it means the minimum frequency of light required or needed to remove the electron. Is that clear? Where the wavelength, where this wavelength, lambda naught is the maximum wavelength because if energy is minimum the wavelength is maximum they are inversely proportional we call this wavelength the threshold wavelength or cut off wavelength Okay, so uh, every time uh, they tell us uh, uh, threshold frequency, it means by threshold frequency, the minimum frequency required uh, to remove electron. Every time they tell us uh, threshold wavelength, it's the maximum wavelength needed to uh, uh, remove electron. It means above uh, or using wavelength greater than uh, lambda threshold, no photoelectric emission. Using frequency less than uh, threshold wavelength doesn't lead to photoelectric emission. So to have photoelectric emission here, uh, we can discuss this in the next slide. It will be easier for you. So here, this uh, show me as a conclusion or uh, for what we covered before. So there are three main cases. The first case, if energy of the photon less than the work function here, no photoelectric emission. So, of course, when the energy of the photon less than the work function, the frequency of light, the frequency of light will be less than the threshold frequency. Even the wavelength is greater than, okay, because this is maximum, lambda maximum. This is a frequency minimum. So, if it's less than the minimum, no photoelectric emission. Greater than maximum, no photoelectric emission. So, here in this case, no photoelectric emission. You see? So if the energy of the photon less than the work function or the frequency less than the threshold frequency or the wavelength greater than lambda maximum or lambda threshold, no photoelectric emission. Now, if they are equal, as you see, we have photoelectric emission. But, which means the electron leaves the metal, leaves the metal, but with zero kinetic energy, with no energy. This is very important. We have photoelectric emission, but the kinetic energy for photoelectron, for photoelectron is zero. 
the last case, if I use energy of the photon greater than the work function, or the frequency greater than F threshold, so F behaves like E, or lambda less than lambda maximum, in this case, we have photoelectric emission, electric emission, we say with maximum kinetic energy. Here, the electron one, it's emitted from the surface, it has more energy to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to move away the surface. You get the idea? So we have. So what we conclude from this slide, or if we need to draw a conclusion about photoelectric emission, uh, the last conclusion that photoelectric emission, electric emission, occurs when the energy of the photon, this is very important conclusion, greater than or equal to the work function, or when the frequency of this light or this photon greater than or equal threshold frequency, or because frequency behaves like energy directly proportional, or the lambda of the used radiation or light is less than or equal the lambda threshold. I hope you get the idea. This is very important conclusion.